I would like to have Charles and Ning and then VK um, talk about this particular, how do we determine the quality in case research? What kind of metrics should we be looking at? Um, should the student perspective have anything to do with assessment? Charles, if you could make a few comments. See, there are two ways uh, I'm interpreting assessment. Assessment in terms of uh, the, the case, how good is the case, how, uh, how, what it creates in the classroom, and two, assessing what students are learning from the case, right? Now, you are, when you use the word assessment, you are focusing on part one. Am I right, um, Teresa? Yeah, well, uh, uh, assessment in terms of either the case itself or the outcomes of the case. Yeah, yeah. so let's, let's look at the, the two parts, right? Now, <clears throat> so this is why my notion of extending the value chain to scholarship. See, the, the reason why we as academics write cases is because we are knowledge creators. And uh, we are both uh, creators and the disseminators. So the, both the, the two sides we have. So a good case should not only be an interesting, entertaining, and uh, enjoyable experience in the classroom, it should bring a new point of view. So that's where I, I push my faculty when they write cases, think about an idea that will create some novelty in the sense, okay, I know how, uh, for example, Coke wars, cola wars that we all probably have thought at some point in time, uh, Michael Porter's case on industry analysis. I see that industry analysis, now I can write about some other wars and then use the same stuff. It doesn't push the boundaries, right? So if we are only replicating type of cola wars, we don't create uh, good knowledge. So a good test, of, a reasonable test for a good case should be to what extent does it incrementally push our knowledge boundaries? To what extent does it push the novelty, right? Otherwise we are becoming just, okay, one, one among the many other types of stuff, right? So cases should have an element of novelty and push the knowledge boundaries. Number two, you should allow some level of flexibility. I, I can't think about three plus five equal to what like type of a case. In the sense, there is only one solution and that's all, right? The, a good case should bring the ambiguity and the complexity of the real world, right? So in essence, uh, there should be a, a reasonable space for two different groups of students to argue two sides of the case and feel rationally and intellectually uh, not dissonant, right? So then in the sense, you have to bring that ambiguity in such a way that students feel arguing against the cases, uh, against a one position or taking a position as a palatable. So a good case should allow that uh, debate in the classroom so that by the end of the debate, we have seen both sides of the work and then we are able to go, right? And the third test I would put for a good case is, does this case sort of help students remember a framework or remember a particular conceptual tool, right? I mean, 20 years from now, students will forget that particular details of the case, but what they will remember is, hey, I did that, uh, the uh, Rolls-Royce case, and they will remember the, the model. The way in which students remember and tag complex frameworks, complex models, is by remembering these small vignettes of uh, Chris Johnson or some particular characters of the case. So that, that's the thing. So in a sense, a good case should allow students to recognize a good uh, a framework that will stay for them for much longer than beyond the classroom. I think that's great. Um, Ning, do you want to make a comment? Sure, uh, just a couple of brief uh, comments. So uh, in terms of the quality metrics uh, of cases, um, I think the metrics can include uh, questions such as, uh, is the research rigorous? Um, VK made this excellent um, and interesting comment, which is uh, that the, these metrics and even the perception of rigor itself uh, can evolve over time. Um, the perception can be socially constructed. So we have to keep up. We have to, um, no matter how it uh, evolves, we have to meet the uh, quality standards. 
Um, another quality of uh, case research, um, as Charles mentioned, is really novelty. So are the findings novel? Uh, has the research demonstrated that the findings are truly meaningful and contributing to knowledge creation? Um, I think that's uh, a very important quality. And finally, the research needs to be rigorous, but shouldn't be rigid, right? Because there's always uh, room for um, innovation, including methodological innovation. Um, as for the question about training and use in classrooms, I think for case research, uh, the application or the use of these cases in classrooms uh, would provide a great uh, tool to get feedback from students. And the feedback from students uh, and the executives can really provide additional evidence about the impact of, uh, of your research. And this applies to teaching cases as well. Thank you. BK, do you have um, any more comments about assessment or metrics that? Um, yeah, I've had a couple quality? of things which are complementary to what, what we talked about. But I'll start with the proposition that all assessment is going to be subjective. So there are, there are no magic bullets in terms of assessment, right? So we have to acknowledge that whether it is here or elsewhere. And the story that I usually uh, use for making this point is the Sydney um, Opera House. In, this is in Australia. It was a project management case. And when it was built, it was considered to be a failure. Now it is considered to be one of the successful enterprises 20 years down the road. So what we think of as immediate outcome may not really be a point that you say 20 years from now. And I made this earlier. There are delayed outcomes for a, 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 an approach like case method. Some of those results are going to be known only much later. And that's a very subjective judgment we're going to make. Having said that, I think we have a lot of work to do at the institutional level. That is, how do we get some acceptable way of thinking about assessment of cases at the institutional level? That means at the universities and even in the academy or the AACSB level. We haven't done a good job of that, quite honestly speaking. All right. So even now, at the end of the day, a faculty member who is doing cases will have to make the case for himself or herself that this is a good stuff to do. Uh, if you're writing an article and if it comes out in AMG, nobody thinks about it. It is part of the metric. We have a metric we go by. We have UTD, you have Financial Times 50, all of that stuff is there. But we don't have a similar consensus about what we need to do institutionally. And that's perhaps something that AOM or some other professional organization in management should take it up. And I think maybe AACSB should be influenced to think about the institutionalization of the, some of the metrics for case teaching. So I think that's important. I think that is important for the future of the next generation of people who are going to come to the right. It may not benefit me, but that's fine. But I'm worried about the next generation and keeping the next generation of case teachers alive. This is even more important now because in the US at least, we are now seeing a decline of tenured faculty positions and they are being replaced by clinical faculty members who can be fired on the spot, right? So how will they justify that what they are doing is valid uh, or are they going to be just the victims of the cost pressures that universities will face? I don't know that answer to that question, but I think we as a field should begin to think about how to say that this is a good clinical faculty member teaching using case method as opposed to this is not as good a clinical faculty member. That's an issue that we have to com confront in the next two to three years. It is, it is coming at us faster than I thought it would. It would. I, do, I do agree with you wholeheartedly on that one, especially when you talk about adjunct online teachers and they're dealing with cases and how they handle the case in the online, whether it be synchronous or asynchronous, it becomes a very iffy metric, in fact, um, of whether they do a good job of a good job of it and how much preparation it takes to do case teaching.